It has been a long time since I've been so excited to review a product, but this, the Garmin Phoenix 8, is the latest smartwatch from Garmin, and honestly, I've been waiting for this for months. And so in today's video, we're gonna talk about how the Garmin Phoenix 8 works as a golf watch and how it compares to the Garmin S70, which is Garmin's flagship dedicated golf watch. So there's a handful of things that are different. There's a whole bunch of things that are the same. So if you've been trying to figure out if you should buy the Garmin Phoenix 8 or the S70 or something different, keep watching. I think you're gonna like today's video. So in this video, we're gonna talk about seven things you need to know about the Phoenix 8 as it relates to the S70. So first, a few quick things I wanna get out of the way. I just received this yesterday and I've basically been doing nothing but using it and playing with it nonstop. So this is not going to be a full Phoenix 8 review. I have not actually golfed with it, although I have gone in and spent a considerable amount of time within the golf app, within the settings. And so I've got a really good sense of how this does compare from a feature standpoint to the S70 as well as older Epix models. So don't mistake this for a full review. That is going to be coming. But I've been getting a ton of people that have been asking, how does the Phoenix 8 compare to the S70 purely from a golf perspective? And this video is going to answer a bunch of those questions. But let's get the most important thing out of the way first, and that is when it comes to the things that matter, the Phoenix 8 has pretty much everything that the S70 does from a golf perspective. The new Phoenix 8 has adopted pretty much all of the essential golf features that the S70 has. It just adds some extra stuff, while there are also a few golf-specific things it doesn't have that we're going to get into. One of the biggest ones is that it now features the enhanced plays like distances that were introduced in the S70. So you just swipe up on your GPS numbers to get your plays like distances, and it's going to take into account slope it's going to take into account air density, and now it's going to take into account wind, which is something that some of the older models didn't do that the S70 does. As you would expect, it has built-in shot tracking, just like the S70 and the Epix watches before it. So if you want to track every shot you hit and be able to relive it after the round and get all your statistics, you can do that without additional sensors. But if you want the best experience possible with this watch, it is compatible with the Garmin CT10 sensors, so you can put these on every single one of your clubs, or you can put it on just a couple of them and pair it with the watches functions to track your shots. The Phoenix 8 is also compatible with the new Z30 rangefinder, which is really cool because all you have to do is shoot the flag, look at your watch, and it will show you exactly where the flag is on the green on your watch amongst a bunch of other cool features. So if you're someone who's deep in the Garmin ecosystem, you should definitely check out the Z30 because, I mean, it's pretty cool. Another feature that they both have that's really cool is enhanced virtual caddy features. So once you've played five rounds, the virtual caddy will get to know your game and it will make club recommendations based on your specific statistics. So let's say the virtual caddy knows that you don't play well out of bunkers. Well, it's smart enough to then suggest a club that's going to give you the best chance of staying away from those bunkers. No other virtual caddy or shot tracking system that I know of does this, and it's a pretty cool thing Garmin does. So that feature was originally released just for the S70, but now we have seen it in the Phoenix 8 as well. Also, both watches, like a lot of the other previous Garmin watches, have a tempo mode, so you can practice your tempo and your speed. The only downside to the tempo mode here is that you have to hit a ball for it to work. So you can't just sit down here in your office, practice your tempo. You've got to make contact with the ball for that mode to work, which is the same on all the Garmin watches I've used. All of that to say, for the most important things, the things that matter, the Phoenix 8 and the Garmin S70 from a golf perspective are essentially the same. So while the most important features of these two watches are the same, there are some subtle differences. And so if you've been trying to decide, should I get the S70? Should I pay more and get the Phoenix 8? Should I get an older Epix model? I think the rest of this video is going to help you answer this question. Just keeping in mind that this is not a full review yet. That is going to be coming in the near future. Hey, real quick, are you still not sure if any of the watches we're talking about are right for you? I've got you covered. There's a link below to a golf quiz. You're gonna answer a few questions about what you're looking for in a golf watch, and I'm going to give you my best recommendation based on the watch I think is the best fit for your needs. You can do it right now while you're watching this video, and I think you're gonna find it super useful. All right, back to the video. Okay, getting into the differences, second thing you should know is buttons versus touchscreen. So the S70 has three buttons along the right-hand side, and you primarily use the touchscreen when you are navigating. The Phoenix, on the other hand, has a five-button setup, and while it is also a touchscreen, you don't have to use it as much, and in fact, I prefer using the physical buttons. I found touchscreens, especially when you're on the course or you've got a golf club on, to just be a little bit cumbersome, and that's one of the reasons why I personally have preferred using the Epix or now the Phoenix models over the S70 just because of that touchscreen. So this could go either way for you. If you're someone who loves the idea of a touchscreen, you like the simplicity of the three button system, the S70 will be great. But if you like a little bit more control and you don't always like using a touchscreen, then it may be worth upgrading to a Phoenix or getting one of the older Epix models. 
Also, I just feel like I need to throw this in there. I'm talking about Epix models. So the Epix and the Phoenix are essentially the exact same thing. When Garmin rolled out a new screen, it's a beautiful AMOLED screen, they essentially just called it the Epix, but all the internals, all the features were pretty much the same as the Phoenix. Now with the Phoenix 8, they have gotten rid of the Epix line of watches. They have the Phoenix 8 OLED, which is essentially what the Epix was, and they have the Phoenix 8 Solar, which is essentially what the Phoenix has always been. So we're talking about the OLED version, the one with the really nice screen. Also, as of the time I've been shooting this video, you can get this. This is the watch I have been wearing for the past year. It's the Epix Gen 2 that came out about two and a half years ago. It's essentially the same as a Phoenix 7. They've since come out with the Phoenix 7 Pro and now the Phoenix 8. So it's essentially two generations older, but is still a great watch and you can get them on Amazon for about 600 bucks. So if people are interested, I will do a comparison between this older model, which you can get for about half the price of the newer Phoenix 8 later on. But just know that if you like the idea of a more full featured fitness watch, you like the idea of having five buttons. There are still Garmin options out there that are not as expensive as the Phoenix 8, but if you do want the latest and greatest, then obviously the new model is probably for you. Okay, third thing you should know, and this is a very minor difference, but is something that is important for golfers, is on the S70, there is a score around the bezel. So one through 18, and when you are playing golf, you will see little colors show up next to the numbers to indicate what your score was. Personally, I love this feature, and it's probably the golf thing that's lacking from the Phoenix line that I miss the most. So if you're a dedicated golfer, if you like to see a visual representation of your score, that's a really nice way that they do it on the S70 and you're not going to get that on the Phoenix or the Epix models. So fourth thing you should know, there are some minor user interface differences between the S70 and the Phoenix 8. With the new Phoenix, they have updated the graphics so the course maps look just as good as they do on the S70, which is a step up from some of the older Garmin models, which I love. But when it comes to entering your score in your statistics, things look a little bit different. For instance, if you're entering, if you hit the fairway or hit it left or right, the S70 has a nice visual indicator with arrows going left and arrows going right. Whereas on the Phoenix, you just kind of scroll through and you don't have those nice visual indicators. It's a very minor thing. And after looking at the watches side by side and comparing them, it's actually less of an issue than I was thinking it was in my head. But the user interface is just slightly better for golfers on the S70 over the Phoenix 8. All right, fifth difference is the S70 comes with an integrated bracelet. So if you put it down on the table, it's not going to lay totally flat, whereas the Phoenix 8 does not come with an integrated bracelet. So it's just one like this. In some ways, you could say that that makes it feel a little bit cheaper, but I actually like the fact that it lays flat. If I need to take it off and put it on my desk or I'm charging it, I like the fact that it lays flat. Although there is something that does feel a little bit more high end about the integrated bracelet of the S70. So it's a minor issue, but some people do prefer one or the other. So I figured it was worth mentioning. All right, six, and I'm not going to go into this too much because that's a whole nother video. That is fitness features. When I first used the S70 about a year and a half ago, I was so excited about all of the fitness features it had. So stress score, body battery, all of the run tracking and fitness tracking, it was great. Until I then tested out the Garmin Epic series where it's all of those fitness things on steroids. It tracks everything you could ever want to track and it does it in a way that's pretty user friendly and makes me want to go take care of my body and take care of my health and go work out because I want to track all of those things. This is the main reason I switched from the Apple Watch to a Garmin watch. So if you're someone who spends a lot of time outdoors, hiking, cycling, in the gym, doing lots of different activities, it might be worth it to spend a little bit of extra money to get the Phoenix because it is considerably more capable than the S70. But if you're just looking for a pure golf watch just to use on the course or something that has more basic features like step counter, sleep tracking, things like that, the S70 will do just fine at a fraction of the price. But if you are looking for the full meal deal to track everything you could possibly track, it might be worth upgrading to the Phoenix. And finally, the last thing you need to know is price because there is a pretty big difference between both of these watches and honestly, neither of them are cheap. For the 47 millimeter S70, it's $699, and if you want the Phoenix 8, it's gonna start out at $999, or for an extra 100 bucks, you're gonna be able to get the Sapphire version, which is going to add more durability. Those are objectively expensive watches. Can you get watches that are going to do similar things for a lot less? Yes. But if you're looking for the best of the best, I consider these to be the two best golf watches on the market. They're certainly the two best that I have tested. So if that's what you're in the market for, they may definitely be 
worth it. So with that, I'm gonna have a whole lot more content around the Phoenix 8. There is a lot we can go into. We can compare it directly to the S70 on the course. We can compare it to the Epix. But here's the thing. I know right now there's not a whole lot of content out there regarding the Phoenix 8 as it relates to golf. So if you have questions, drop a comment below. I will do my best to answer those comments directly, but then I will also make sure that as I'm going out and reviewing it and using this more, I work that into my reviews and work that into my content. So I've got to say so far, I'm extremely impressed with what the Phoenix 8 can do, but I'm just scratching the surface. I will link to some related reviews and videos and content below, as well as my list of the best golf GPS watches on the market. So hopefully you find that helpful. And if you found this helpful, maybe consider hitting the subscribe button, thumbs up, do all of those YouTube-y things. My name is Sean Ogle. I'm the founder of this thing here at Breaking 80, where we talk about cool golf products and golf courses. If you're still not sure if one of these watches is right for you, I got you covered. Go take our 20 second quiz. You're gonna answer a few questions about what you're looking for, and I'm going to give you my best recommendation based on your needs. I think you're gonna find it super useful, so you can find that right there. And with that, we're gonna have a lot more Phoenix 8 content for you soon, and I will see you on the next video. Peace.